Well, thank you for the key for the opportunity. Don't forget your prayer list. Very important. Hope the Bible's up to one-eyed John. One-eyed John, chapter 5. That's not John, that's one-eyed John. First John. One-eyed John, chapter 5. And you can take your shoes off if you want to, but of course your feet, but you're on holy ground here. I've always been told, and I believe it, when you get into the book of John, you're on holy ground. When you get there, one-eyed John, chapter 5, it's all stands. We read three or four verses. If you can, if you can't, that's fine. We'll start reading in verse 13. Jumps up a verse. You've got to read that verse too, Lord, to go to 12 and on up. Verse 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is a confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that he have, have, look here, have the petition, that's writing, that we desire of him. If any man see his brother sin, the sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that you shall pray for it. All righteousness, is that what that says? No. It says, all unrighteousness is sin. That, that little word there, all, means all, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that uh, whosoever is born to God sinneth not. Now, I want you to look at that right there. We'll come back to that. I want you to look at that. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, uh, there's some very important things in here. I want you to look at there. Uh, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are, what, of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given unto us understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is, the, what, the true God and eternal life, Little children, keep you look, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your time, Lord. We uh, thank you for the continuing to bless this church, Lord. We we will pray for this time right here, Lord, that you will bless the reading of your word. That your word is not our word, Lord. It's not my word. I pray that you'll bless the reading of your word. Pray that you'll bless the preaching of your word. Let the Holy Ghost be with me. Put the words in my mouth. You would have me to say, Lord, I am nothing. If I say something, it will not amount to anything, Lord. I pray that everything said and done will do nothing but glorify thy holy name and bring you honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Uh, as I said a while ago, uh, yeah, I, I believe when you get in the book of John or any of the Bible, as far as I'm concerned, it's on holy ground. The Bible tells us we read these, oh, first of all, if I'd put a title on this, I would just say, I would just simply uh, call it uh, that we might know. That's it, that we might know. Uh, you see, as, as you start looking through the book of John here, uh, going to First John chapter 1 on up, John is searching. He is a looking. He is looking into the depth of a person's heart. He was looking into the innermost part of a human being uh, to see What's inside him? Because he's wanting to see what's inside that person that claimed to be a child of God. Now, there's a lot of people who claim to be the child of God, and they are not. But if you'll read through this book from chapter 1 on up through to where we are now, John is trying to find out what's inside the child of God. Now, John establishes some very important evidence how you can know that you're a child of God, as we look at this, uh, he gives us some evidence that we can know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, you're a child of God. 
that you can know for sure how you stand in God's sight. And we all need to know how we stand in the eyes of God. Every Christian should know how they stand in the eyes of God as they go through their daily life. Folks, I don't think there's a one of us in this building right here tonight that was able to get up this morning, drink their coffee. We all have coffee. That's a Baptist thing right there. And go to work or whatever you do and get through this whole day and get here tonight without committing one sin. You can't do it. This old body is sinful. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to look at a few things here. Real quick. Brother King, give me a whole lot of extra minutes here for some reason or another. We're going to look at a few things here. <laughs> you must have thought I was one of them other preachers. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, uh, number one, we're going to look at the certainty of answered prayer. John has opened the lip of a whole bunch of doors right here. And... Uh, as we look, look at verse 14 and 15 of uh, uh, John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask, look here, if we ask anything according to his will, now that's how we pray, according to his will, now I want you to look at that, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. Now, the certainty of answered prayer. Now, as we're looking at this, is things that we might know. God's will at that we are a praying people. God wants his people to pray. God wants to hear from you. God wants to talk to you. Look at Matthew uh, chapter, well, you don't have to go there if you don't want to. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, nine on, uh, that's where his, uh, uh, the disciples came to him and said, Jesus, te teach us to pray. And he gives us a model prayer uh, for them to pray. Now you can sit and quote that prayer if you want to, but that was one that was uh, uh, down as a model prayer to teach the disciples how to pray. And it says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Everybody knows this. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive uh, our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and, and the glory forever. Amen. Now this is a model prayer. This is to teach people how to pray. I don't have time to break this down, but it's recognizing God is the Father and so on. You see, Paul said in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse uh, 17, Pray without ceasing. You see, it is in prayer that we get ourselves in the right attitude before God. That's what prayer is. This is prayer meeting night. This is Bible study night. We're going to study some Bible here, you see. Uh, you see, but we need to have the right attitude of prayer. We need to be in the right attitude of prayer before, before we even come to church. We need to pray before we do anything. We need to pray before we get in our car to drive. We need to pray. And when you get to church, if you've already prayed and already filled up, you're going to enjoy the service. God is the one who is able to help us and no one else. You see, nobody can really help you but God himself. Man is the one that cannot help himself but us. Depend on God. Most people depend on some man, you see. They stop and think about it. You see, not, as I said before the last time I was here, not just when we need him, but all the time. We need God. What is it you always say? God is good all the time. You need him with you everywhere you go. God hears and he does answer prayer. I know, I'm standing here in front of you, one big hunk of answered prayer. Uh, you see, God is not a God that is way off somewhere. God is a God that cannot be reached. He is a God who is near, and he has an ear, 
and he wants to hear from you. God has ears. Read the Bible. He wants to hear from you, you see, and he knows, and you listen, and he answers. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. We're going to look at some certain things right here and let God's word answer it. Not Charlie Markham, but God's word, you see. I, I want you to listen to that. Isaiah chapter 59, look at verse 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. I want you to look at that. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. God is not deaf, folks, but your iniquities have separated between, look here, has separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Folks, let me tell you something. When you call God, you don't get a dead dial tone. When you call God, you don't get a busy signal. But when you call God, He will answer. He can hear. He's not deaf. And if you can't get a hold of God, there's a dead monkey on the line. Better get the dead monkey off if you want to get through to God. Because God's line is not broke, it's not bent, it's not busy, it is open. And if you can't get through him, go over to uh, Isaiah 59, read verse 1 and 2. If you can't get a hold of him, they did monkey on the line. The key to being heard and the key uh, to getting what you ask for is the will of God in verse 14. Look at verse 14 of our text there, and that's, uh, that's a whole key right there. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to here, according to his will, he hears. <coughs> God does not indulge childish things that we ask for. He's not going to take care of us as we ask for things frivolous. He's not going to take care of us if we ask for stuff that's not going to be good for us because he's not going to give us something that is going to hurt us. We might pray and we might not uh, get what we ask for, but it might be something that will hurt us on down the line, you see. You stop and think about it. God is all wise. God hears our prayers. Listen. We need to be prepared to receive the message when we come to church, and that's only done by prayer. If we don't do that, we might as well just take and stick our little umbrellas up, and the message will hit them umbrellas and just slide right off. We tell everybody else what they missed last Sunday. We need to be prepared when we get to church. And the preacher needs to be prepared. He needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and he needs to be prepared to preach the message, or he's not going to do us any good. We all need to be prayed up and filled up if God is going to answer, if God's going to take care of us. God is all wise. God hears all prayers. Well, do you think he does or not? He answered all his prayers, and he answers them. Now, listen here. In a way that he knows will be best for us. Now, if you're a preacher, if you don't spend a lot of time in prayer, if you don't spend a lot of time in studying the Word of God, you can't do everybody any good. And if y'all are not ready, you got your little umbrellas up, man, it ain't going to do the preacher no good either. Folks, I'm telling you, this, I, this is what the Bible says, not me. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. This teaches us the scriptural attitude that we should have. And we pray to God. We come to here in prayer. That's a scriptural attitude that we should have, folks. We should have confidence. Now listen, 
loudest people's prayers don't get answered. We should have confidence that God has heard. In other words, a person must believe. You have to believe. If you pray, you have to believe. If you ask something from God, you have to believe that what he's going to do is right, whether he does it or whether he doesn't do it, and that he will answer when you talk to him, and that is faith. You must believe by faith and prayers which are within his will, not our will, but his will. You see, we should accept the will of God, whatever it may be. You see, prayers that appear to be unanswered simply means that God said, no, wait a while. Folks, I'm telling you, sometimes we pray and we don't get what we ask for. But God knows that if He gives it to you now, one, six months from now, the bad. That I have experienced. I have time to go into it tonight. I've seen the time that I prayed and I didn't get what I wanted. But then later on, I found out that if I had got what I wanted when I asked for it, I would have been in big trouble when I needed it. knows what he's doing. I don't. Number one, the certainty of prayer. Number two, certainty of punish sin. Look at First John chapter 5. Look at verse 16 and 17. It says, If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death I do not say that you should pray for it. Verse 17, all righteousness. What did say? No. It says all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Certainty of punished sin. Folks, sin is going to be punished. Uh, 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 punish. Look at verse 17. Shows us, uh, this tells us, this uh, uh, tells us that sin, all sin in the eyes of God. Now there's some folks thinks uh, that sometimes it must be something that is done willful for it to be sin. Now there are folks that think that it has to be something that you willfully do to be sin. They also teach that a person can do something ignorantly and it's not sin. Now the, what people teach. Oh, some people teach that a righteous person can do anything and it's not sin. You hear what I said? God simply says all unrighteousness is sin. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to spend a minute here because it's, it's a fact. They are preachers that are teaching John that if you sin, it's not sin. If you sin and don't believe it's sin, it's not sin. That's a lie of the devil. Read your Bible. All unrighteousness is sin. I worked with a fellow some years ago. He was a good boy. I knew him. We stopped at his carry out. We had took a break. We'd been working hard, sweating like dogs. Stopped there to get us something cold to drink. And then I had my seven up, blah, blah, so on. Make a long story short. And here he come with a bottle of beer. I told him I ain't paying for that. He said, why? I said, I ain't spending none of God's money. And I said, this money I got in my pocket belongs to God. Come on. But my preacher, now listen, my preacher told me if I don't believe it's 
sin, it's not sin, I counted it sin unto me. And I told him, you preacher's lying to you, boy. Your preacher is lying to you. That is a sin. Uh, God says it's a sin. And if God says it's a sin, it is a sin. Look here. All unrighteousness is sin. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 10, it says what? There's none righteous, no, not one. Verse 23 says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's awful. It's awful. It's a it's sinful, unrighteous thing. And it is sinful to fail to do the right thing. So I'm telling you, there's some preachers out there that need to be locked up. This ain't on the earth. What have you been saying? Look at James chapter 4, verse 17. James chapter 4, verse 17. Folks, I'm going to tell you, this is Bible study night, and this is some good stuff. This is some good stuff here. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, it is God's Word. This is not mine. This is God. All unrighteousness is sin. Now look at James chapter 4, verse 17 real quick. It says, now, now this is a good verse here. You need to memorize this verse. I've got it memorized. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You need to memorize that verse. Because if you know to do good and don't do it, it is sin. A sin. Oh, let me tell you now, this ain't something I'm telling you. This is what God tells me. Uh, uh, sin of God's people fit into two general classes. Look at verse 16 of chapter 5. And it says, if, if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and what? And he shall give him life, them, Sin not unto death, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Folks, listen. Sin of God's people fit in two categories. First one, there is a sin unto death. Now, I, I, I've got a lot of verses to go here, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have time to do it. I'll just give them to you. Uh, it is a sin. There is a sin of, of such great nature as God will remove you from this earth. He will take you home to be with him. It didn't say he'd send you hell, but he will bust your wig. If you don't believe me, go back to Acts chapter 5, uh, verse 1 through 10. You don't have to go to it, but you can go read it. Uh, Ananias and Safari, uh, they sold the possession and were supposed to have brought the money and give it to the uh, disciples or the priests or whatever, and they didn't do it. And old uh, Ananias, uh, the Holy Ghost, they killed him, and they carried him out. And she come in, and they told her the feet that carried your husband out is waiting to carry you out. I just think what would happen today if people didn't pay their tithes and they was doing that today. And I'm going to tell you something else. There's nothing that says that it won't happen. We're going to look at something here in a minute. Matter of fact, I'm going to read this anyway. I might go a minute over, Brother Gene. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. You know these verses here real well. We've read them before. We've done them the other night when we had communion. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Look at verse 29 and 30. Uh, I'm, we used these the other night when we have communion. Well, it's not only for communion. It's for everything. I want you to look at that. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. I'm going to tell you something. God ain't playing. We do. And the nice and safari learned that. God killed them. And you just stop and think. Uh, people take this communion very frivolously when they take the bread and the wine and you read the scriptures here. It is a very serious deal. I'm telling you, this is serious. 
uh, uh, if you take it unworthily according to this Bible, you could die before you get to that back door out there. Because you partook of the Lord's body. You partook of his shed blood. You got sin, you're walking on dangerous ground, folks. You see, uh, we should be praying. We should be praying for our sinners and brothers. We should be trying to uh, lift them up. Uh, John calls attention to the very needful Christian duty, praying for one another. And Paul called on the churches that he wrote to in Ephesians for them to pray for him, not only him, but the ones that he worked for in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. We are to pray that the backslidden brothers and sisters would be restored. We should pray that they would repent and quit doing their sins and get back in church where they belong. Number three, number one, the certainty of answered prayers, the certainty of punished sin. Now, these are things that are certain. This is not something I'm guessing at. This is not something I'm telling you. This is certain things out of the Bible. And the next one is certainty of I lost my faith. Certainly a plenty of sin. I've lost everything, Brother Keen. Help me. Can you do that? Can you help me? Huh? I don't know. I lost my notes. I'm going to have to go home. I've done this once before. You know, great big congregation all filled up. All kinds of all kinds of people there. Filled from front to back. I was scared to death. You could see people all the way to the back of the church. The whole stuff the Bible didn't have nothing but the introduction. I'd lost every bit of my notes on the way to church. <laughs> all right, let me get down to The certainty of spiritual victory. Now then, look at verse 18. That's going to blow your socks off and then we'll go home. Look at verse 18. Now, this is going to blow your socks off. I want you to look at this real close now. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. We all saved in here, ain't we? I want you to look at that now. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Come and know. I want you to look at that. How is that possible? A born again believer. I see you want some of it. But I got it right now. <coughs> Folks, let me tell you something. God's Word does not lie. You see, a person that's born of God does not sin. Uh, uh, look at uh, uh, Matthew chapter 26. Look at Matthew chapter 26 real quick. And I'm going to explain this the best way I can. Rather, we'll let uh, God explain it. In Matthew chapter 26, look at verse 41. Watch and pray. Now look at this, that you enter not into temptation. Take a look. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I want you to look at that. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. What well, God don't lie, what God said is true. That is born to the Spirit can not sin. King David in Psalms 51 verse 5 said, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and sin. Did my mother conceive me? You see, there's one thing you forget. Uh, you have the spiritual seed of the Lord Jesus Christ in 
this body. If you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got the Holy Spirit in this body. This body can sin. You are of your father, Adam. The body can sin, but the spirit inside of it cannot sin because it's of God. God cannot sin. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You're born again. You're filled up with the Lord Jesus Christ, and you take him somewhere he shouldn't be. You're walking on dangerous ground. If you're saved, you're filled with the Lord Jesus Christ. The seed of Christ in you. You got the Holy Spirit in you. You better not take him in no honky tonk. Because there's a little voice inside of you going to tell you to get out. You don't have to go, but you might pay for it. That's the truth now. Because the Bible is very plain when it says in 8, we know that whosoever is born to God sinneth not. Look at Romans uh, chapter 8. Look at Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at a few verses here. I, I, I'm trying not to go into overtime, Brother Gene. But I'm telling you right now, as born again believers, you need to watch where you go because you got to watch. Look here, you got to watch where you're taking Jesus. You got the seed of Jesus in you. You got the Spirit in you, the Comforter, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now that inner person, it can't sin. God can't sin. His flesh can. Look at Romans chapter eight, verse eleven. I can find it here. I'm getting lost. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. I rest my case. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, And he hath what? He hath quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Jesus, the begotten Son of God, keeps the child of God and does not allow the devil to lay hands on him. According to verse 18. Look at that. God keepeth that wicked one toucheth him not. Look at that. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. Son of God keeps us safe. We who are of God, we know we are of God. So people say that a person cannot know they belong to God. I tell them baloney. I'm like old groundhog in the spring that stands up. You see him on the side of the road all standing up with his brand new suit on, standing there, you know. That's the way I do. I belong to God. Old bumper sticker. I, I'm somebody. God didn't make any junk. But go back to verse 13. Look at that blessed verse right there. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of Son of God that you may know. I got that underline right here, big red in my Bible, that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Folks, I'm telling you, these are some gracious verses. There's, these are some hard verses. Make you think. The Son of God keeps you safe. The Son who was born of God continues to keep us. First Peter uh, chapter one verse five says, "Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, uh, ready to be revealed in the last day, last time." 
we know we are of God. So many people say that a person can. The Bible says they can. Romans 8, 16 said the Spirit is give birth witness of what we are the children of God. God wants us to know. He wants us to know. And all those outside of God are under the power of the wicked one, according to verse 19. And it says, and we know that, what? We are God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Uh, they're in wickedness. We know they're under the control of the devil, and we need to be telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul refers to the devil as the God of this world and as a prince and the power of the air in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. We need to be telling people about Jesus. We need to be passing out the Christ. I passed out some of them today. I, I try to pass out some of them every day. Romans 8, 16 through 18. 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 There's a certainty of ancient prayer, certainty of punished sin, and certainty. Okay, uh, uh, we, we can be certain. We don't have to guess. We don't have to think about it. Open your Bible up. See what God tells us. People say this is just a Jewish fairy tale and all of this stuff. It is the Word of God. A Jew filled with the Spirit of God. You've got Jesus in you. You know that. Nobody don't have to tell you. You know it. Hope that will help get there. It should be a trophy of it. Let's uh let's all come before the Lord and let's pray together tonight. Remember all those folks that we brought up on the prayer list to pray for all those. Probably some that you even know of yourself that we did not bring up. Let's just go ahead and come and let's pray.